Our Chinese uh, medicine is a style of traditional medicine based on 2,500 years of Chinese medical practice that include things like herbs, acupuncture, massage, exercise, and dietary therapy. Um, the Chinese science and medicine always functions within the philosoph philosophy that recognizes the importance of balance and harmony between human beings and the environment. So um, that's the huge difference between Western and Eastern medicine is that Eastern medicine focuses on the environment, the individual, and the balance between the two. Um, whereas if you go to a, a doctor, typically here, they're just trying to treat or mask the symptoms, typically. Um, a good doctor, in, in my opinion, will recognize that each of us are different. And we know in having lupus, more than any other illness, that with lupus, we are all so very different. We have different symptoms. We have the same disease, but we have different symptoms and we react differently to different medications. So we of all people know that we are individual from everyone else with lupus because we're all different. Um, so a good doctor will recognize that. They'll recognize your, uh, your geography, weather, lifestyle, your type of diet. Um, and they're able to gather all of that information and create a plan for you that is flexible. Um, a holistic approach takes into account your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being of a person because all of that is important. Our mind is, can be the most powerful thing to our healing. And a smart or you know doctor that is trying to treat the individual will know that and take that into account. Um, they will also recognize the lack of harmony through symptoms and remember that symptoms are messengers. Mm. Much of Eastern ideology is energy and exchange of energies that have led to the development of symptoms such as acupuncture, which we have Dr. Chang here today to discuss. Um, I've never done acupuncture personally, but we did have Toy. If you guys remember, Toya is the one who made the, the book. Um, a piece of me and she visited Dr. Chang. Um, I was supposed to stay there for the duration of the appointment and get some pictures, but um, it I was not able to stay the whole time and get the picture. So Toya did provide us a video, which I can show you guys. Um, and, and she shared about her experience with cupping, which Dr. Chang did for her and um, as well as the acupuncture needling. Um, one thing that I want to share with you guys, because anytime I do any of these support groups, whatever it's on essential oils, CBD, meditation, whatever it is, I try to do a little bit of research. I'm not a doctor. I'm glad we have one here today, so she'll be able to give you the science behind a lot of what I can't, but there's a lot of things that I feel like I'll pull from what I research that I want to share with you guys that I think is really important. And something that I read and that I like that most Eastern medicine practicing doctors do um, is something that I want you guys to start looking for when you're looking for your healing through whether it's a doctor or an acupuncturist or whoever it is I want you to make sure you find a doctor that listens to you and that pays attention to what you have to say someone that's going to sit there and hear out your symptoms and not just treat you as they treat everyone else um, I want you to look for someone that focuses on your diagno diagnosis and doesn't just treat the symptoms. They're looking to help you find out the problem. Um, someone that treats the whole person, the whole person and not just your organs. You know, you have a stomach ache, okay, let's just give you something, some Pepsi or something for it. Well, why do you have a stomach ache? What's going on? Is it because of stress? Is it because of something else? Is it because of something you're eating in your diet? Are you allergic to something? Um, again, just masking the symptoms is only going to make things worse. Um, health is not just about disease, but about wellness and about maintaining and promoting wellness and prevention. So, you know, seeing an acupuncturist well, uh, regularly, uh, checking your diet and how you're eating, exercising and implementing that in some form of your lifestyle. Um, medicine is a lifelong practice, so hopefully the doctors that we're seeing are continuously learning because it's changing, it's ever-changing. There's new research, there's new information out there all the time, and a lot of the specifically medical doctors or rheumatologists that we see, they go to school for that 
you know, time frame and get that education and that's it. And they're treating us based off of their, you know, doctrine from 10 years ago. So it's important that we seek out people that are going to heal us on our journey, that are constantly learning and understanding that things are ever changing. Look at CBD, like that's become the new hot topic right now. You know, um, there's different things that I feel like they should start learning and trying to incorporate in our healing, especially if they are seeing good results with it. Um, and finally, evidence-based medicine. So, you know, there is a thing called a placebo effect because as I mentioned, the mind is a powerful thing. Um, and also research. You guys know there's a lot of companies and organizations that spend a lot on, on research and that's important. But these things, again, are treating, looking for research for an entire population, not just you as an individual. So it's important again to focus on caring for the individual patient and not the population um and just really care for the patient so you guys know here you know with the house foundation that we've always been really big on holistic alternative care every single support group what do we talk about the first group it was about our diet the second group was about what was it essential oils i think exercise meditation um you know we we're always trying to figure out how can we complete ourselves as a whole in, in our wellness and um, our journey to healing without having to take too many medications? Again, we know sometimes we need them, sometimes they help, and a lot of times they're even lifesavers, but what things can we learn about ourselves and our doctors to treat us that maybe we can implement that aren't gonna cause so many side effects that's a little bit more natural? So. With that said, um, we have Dr. Chang from Upland Wellness, or Dr. Sharon, is, is, is that okay if we call you Dr. Sharon? Oh, just, yeah. Yes, okay. Dr. Just call Sharon. me Sharon. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, again, she treated Toy, and she went there for an acupuncture session, so um, I have a video of a little bit of her experience with that as well, if you guys want to hear that, but uh, right now, we'll go ahead and hear from Dr. Sharon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys for inviting me today. And, and um, I really admire what Kimberly is doing here because I think um, lupus is definitely a very complicated um, problem that um, everyone needs to kind of exchange information and support each other. And as we all know, emotion is very important in this, uh, in this disease. So that... Um, not stressing out, not losing your sleep, not extremely stressed. It's very important in this in this case. Um, sorry about the all the technical problem today. And then, well, luckily I still have a copy of PDF, so it's not as good as a PowerPoint, but it will work. Yeah. So my name is Sharon, and I'm from Upper Acupuncture, and today I'm going to talk about. Um, the traditional Chinese medicine. I think Kimberly actually did really good research and I think she actually covered everything like it is going home now. <laughs> yeah, because um, I, and, um, I actually, um, I came from Taiwan, so I grew up in Asia and everything, so English is not my first language, so sometimes I'm like, I will have more difficulty expressing myself but I think what Kimberly said was pretty much everything I needed to say so <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, I'm, 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 I'm um, very glad that she's here and that I feel much more comfortable okay. around her um, so what is the um, our philosophy so it all starts from this symbol which I'm sure a lot of people have seen it before mm -hmm. so in our philosophy everything is about balance okay there's um, there's definition of yang, definition of yin, so pretty much everything in the world, almost anything, it can be divided into two, yang or yin, and then there's also the, of course it's not that easy, so there's like yin within yang, yang within yin, that's the whole shebang that seems that's not directly related to you guys, but um, so what we're trying to say is balance, balance very important in life, in health. So, like for example, um, what um, lupus in our, our uh, medicine will be, it's 
I think from Western medicine point of view, it's mostly about information, right? So you have a lot of information. So because there's information, so they're trying to kill or stop the information, okay? But from our medicine, we will want to find out why. Why do you have the information in this location, not the other location? Because like, like everyone experienced, it's different, right? It could be um, in the stomach for her, but it could be in the shoulder for her, you know, everyone's different. But why? Because we're born differently. And there's, um, of course, genetic plays a big part in this whole thing. So maybe um, if your mom was diagnosed, then it's, you tend probably tend to have that similarity going on. So balance is important because um, sometimes with, like I said about the young within in and with going out, sometimes what we see as a information or as problem, it could be the alarm system that's telling you, hey, there's a thief, there's something going wrong here. But instead of um, trying to take care of the problem, you, the current medicine sometimes, if your doctor doesn't have enough time to look into root of the problem, they'll just try to kill your alarm system and say, yeah, just remove that. If it doesn't make a sound, then you're okay. <laughs> right? Just, but then what's going on, right? You, you probably need to know, like, is someone trying to break in from this window? Is right. there something going on here? Instead of, like, covering your ear or kill the power to the alarm so that no one hears it, so you're fine for a while. Until next time when things really big happen. So sometimes there's signs and symptoms, but from our medicine, sometimes when we hear, let's say, information, it's not necessarily um, bad for you. Information, originally information, um, it's, a, it's a system that your body designed to bring all the good immune cell, a lot of, why you have swollen? Because all the lymph, all your body nutrient, fluids, flow into this area, trying to heal this area. Mm. But if you have prolonged inflammation, that's the problem. Why is it not healing properly? Why is it always swollen? Why is it rare? Why is it painful? Then that's the problem. So the first sign of inflammation, sometimes it's not necessarily all that bad. Sometimes maybe it's actually needing a little bit more help in trying to take care and heal that properly instead of, okay, there's inflammation, I don't want the swallow anymore, that's just trying to move all the lymph and body fluid away, yeah. So balance, sometimes is really hard to get, but balance, we have um, heat, cold, um, a lot of yin yang, a lot of things about balance. So I think our philosophy is about balance because, um, too much of something is not good for you. So exercise, everyone knows, oh, exercise is so good for you. But if you exercise too much, you'll get sports injury, and there's actually going to be bad for you, maybe in some part of the cardiovascular problem. So too much of everything, it's not good. So it's about what maybe you're born with a tendency that you will need this part a little bit more then you just need to learn to know your body and maybe talk to someone who can tell you like, okay, I think you need to maybe rest a little bit more, but compare you and maybe your friend, your friend maybe um, it's healthier for her to run hour, one hour every day, but for you maybe just 10 minutes, that's the best time for you. So everyone is not the same. I like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes and slowly fill up. <laughs> so everyone's different. It's not like, okay, so if there's a guideline and say you should work out 30 minutes three times a week for how long, how much um, heartbeat and everything, that's a statistic. Maybe they're trying to find a good number that fits majority of people, but that's not everyone. So there's always that balance you kind of need to also find in your health, that what you balance from, let's say, stress level, family and work, 
me time, taking care of yourself, balance. Okay, so well, I'll just go over these really quickly. So um, we have um, in our theory five elements very important. So there's the all five elements that um, actually balance each other. So there's um, we call mother and son relationship. For example, we believe. So wood, if you burn the wood, you have fire. So wood is fire's mother. So um, they also have um, organs relationship too. So for example, sometimes um, we think that, um, for example, wood is very, very important actually for lupus. Wood is in our know, organ wise, it's liver, gallbladder. So liver is a um, organ that's for detox purpose, and at night it kind of clean up the blood, filter out the toxicity, and that's how you know people stay healthy. That's why sleeping at night at the right time is very important. And but you know, like a lot of people when they go to um, take a test exam or like you're going to an interview or I'm coming to a presentation, I'm like, oh, my stomach yeah. hurts or. I need to go to restroom. Why? Because it's going to affect Earth. Earth is our digestion system. It's our um, like stomach and spleen digestion system. So when wood is too strong, it's overwhelming. It's like oh, I can't take this anymore. I'm really stressed out. It's going to attack our organ, which is why people when they're nervous, um, they might actually have like stomach. Oh, I need to go to restroom kind of thing. But it doesn't happen to everyone. Why? Because we have our strength and weakness. We're born a certain way. So that's why part of the genetics course is always there, but about balance. Okay. So very briefly going over this. So all the um we have twelve major channels. So twelve major channels going to 12 major organs and every organ has their own time of the day that's the time that they're um, they're they're at the most energy. they have the most energy and they should be function the best so for example according to this we should be eating breakfast between 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. because that's the time when their stomach should be working right? and then in the morning, between seven, uh, 5 a.m. to 7 p.m., uh, 7 a.m., that's the time when the large intestine channel is working, meaning that that's the time when it's the best time for you to have bowel movement. So waking up, maybe drinking a cup of water, going to the restroom before 7 a.m., and then have a good healthy breakfast. That's the good rhythm for your body to start the day, okay? And then also one more thing, very, very important, is to sleep before 11 o'clock. Because like I said, wood is the stress-related kind of um, element. So wood is gallbladder and liver. So this part, you need to be sleeping before 11 o'clock for your body to be able to detox naturally and properly at night. So be asleep between 11 to 3 a.m. is very important. That's why Oh, I have a lot of patients who's actually, um, let's say, nurses. Okay. If they're the one who's working night shift, a lot of times they will have hormonal problems. Even though they only work three days a week and then they sleep all they want during the day. Because they're not following the nature, they're not following the rhythm that your time clock, your body should be what you're, you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. you're, Sleeping during the time when your stomach tells you you need to be eating. You're sleeping when your heart tells you that, hey, this is the time for your heart to be maybe pumping a little bit, walk a little bit, work out a little bit, and you're sleeping. But the time when your body's supposed to be calming, relaxing, and detoxing, you're working. So in the long run, yes, when you're younger, you can borrow that energy from the future, from your bank, and then just push yourself through. But eventually, we all know 
credit card comes with interest, right? <laughs> so eventually you have to pay it back. That's when, you know, one day maybe just one small thing costs a crashing down or a serious uh, problem in the health because your body cannot handle it anymore. Mm. Yeah. So that's the channel clock. Mm. And then this is briefly. So basically, out of those 12 major channels, um, for example, we'll have maybe this, is oh, maybe too small, but this is gallbladder channel. It goes from the foot, going on the side of the leg, going up to the hip, it's like sciatica on the side, and that's on the side of the body, and going to um, your eye and your ear. So a lot of channel, it's not just one thing, and it's actually a lot of things are connected together and they're talking to each other. So energy or blockage in one channel, a lot of times some it will affect the other ones. So yeah, just that's how it works. So as acupuncturists, we are insert needles at the point to help um, blocking the energy, um, blocking the stagnation, moving energy around to help your body heal yourself properly, naturally. So we're not the one who's healing you guys. Um, we're, we're not the one who's healing patients. Patients the one who's helping themselves. We're just giving them a push. Yeah, so uh, this is also the five element system. So again, everything like wood, fire, earth, they all have their property and will have different organs, smells, um, time of the day, or taste, um, season. So a lot of things, it's um, related. So for example, sometimes, um, let's say a patient come in and ask me, oh, I have hot flashes. Or we'll ask, when? When do you feel the hot flashes the most? Because it's not one thing for us all. It's not, oh, hot flashes. I'll give you something, you're just hormone wrong. You're just going to take a hormone pill and you'll be fine. But it's a lot of things, a lot of time it's not. What it's much more complicated. What if you're having them at night? Well, if it's at night, from the yin and yang balance kind of point of view, we believe that's more related to yin deficiency. Okay, so it could be a, that will be more related to hormone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but some people they actually feel it after lunch in the afternoon but there that's actually the opposite it should be we call yang deficiency so that type of person instead of they're needing the hormone they actually need more energy mm -hmm. so there's like natural energies that they need they can get it from maybe some supplements they can be getting from um, eating well eating the right kind of food maybe lightly exercise start building up their body's uh, constitution and endurance. So I have a, peop a couple of people here that say they're having uh, a lot of hot flashes at night. Uh -huh. So in that case, being that it's probably hormonal, mm -hmm. um, they would need to take some supplements? or. Well, there's a few things. I, I mean, from our point of view, if it's not crazy, we rather recommend food for a patient mm -hmm. to eat instead of giving you more pills again because we all know that uh, lupus related the estrogen and everything so and hormone is a very dangerous thing to play with in my opinion mm -hmm. so you just need a little bit but it takes a big toll and make a big change in the body mm -hmm. so um, let's say the patient who's um, having hot flash at night will start with maybe add asking them to eat things that's more gluey so for example okra but it's not deep fried okay um, <laughs> because when you when you deep fry it you actually dry up the slimy things that it's good for you mm -hmm. so we need something more nourishing um see the, a lot of food that has like the slimy um natural property that's the thing that's going to help them if they're the one who has any problem at night yeah i got a question mm -hmm. um I am on uh, estrogen, estrogen pill. Um, if I don't take the pill, I have them throughout the day. Okay. So what, what's that from? Well, so 
in the long run also, because if you um, that also go back to that black and white in, in Tai Chi picture, we believe that the energy actually convert each other. So if you start with maybe an indeficiency, but eventually in for a long your yang energy will try to convert and help out with that part. But if it's not enough, eventually the yang energy also will will be deficient too. Mm -hmm. So it runs in a circle. They're they're interchangeable in a way. But it takes time and takes energy and take the right um, lifestyle to make them change. Yeah. So um, in your case, if you say that if you don't take the estrogen pill, you feel the energy like you feel the hot flash during the day personally i will encourage you to eat something that's more young tonifying young and tonifying what we call chi kind of thing so um things that's warmer okay um, like chicken like broth say, maybe chicken broth is good chicken broth you can add some ginger to it um or if you're okay with ginseng but even within the ginseng category there's like American ginseng, Korean ginseng, Chinese, there are different property. You have to choose the right one. Yeah. So maybe you can start with American ginseng and see how you feel. Because American ginseng is actually a good combination of tonify yin and the qi part. And you should also notice that um, energy level should also increase with it. Yeah. You can give it a try. Just okay. one tea bag, try it a day and see how you feel. About um, at nighttime, if you don't like okra. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's actually more food than okra, but I I understand that um in the standard American culture diet, it's actually kind of hard to find the slimy stuff. So I think the closest thing will be like um, maybe asparagus. But, you know, yeah, it's a little bit of slimy, um, something like that. And of course, there's much more things that's even more slimy. For example, How about avocado? Avocado. That's creamy. <laughs> it's not exactly the same. So, so cactus. Cactus is good. Oh, cherry. Yeah. Cherry. Yeah. Good. cherry no. Not really slimy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cherry is actually more warming. I don't think. Moisture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, slimy stuff. Also, <coughs> you can bless you. Um, yes. Like a uh, skin product. So, well, we will eat things that's like uh, pork beef, chicken Not beef. Really, no. I know. Collagen. Okay. Like Food that was good with a lot of collagen kind of thing. They're usually a little bit slimy. Or um, if you cook your, let's say if you cook the chicken soup, but you don't put a lot of water, you put more chicken and don't remove all the. Um, soft bone or skin to keep the whole chicken in. If you boil it for a long time, after the soup gets cooled down, it becomes more like a jelly. Mm -hmm. Those kind of thing are good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those like the gelatin kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I know, it's like, um, mm -hmm. there's also, I know, um, I know there are some places even that say they, they sell, yeah, bone broth is also good because they get, they uh, simmer for a long time, they get the, all the goodies out. I know there's a drinkable collagen now, or mm -hmm. you know, even Costco yeah, too. Yeah, you know, yeah, things yeah. that's more like, of course, if you wanted to, um, I think the natural way mm -hmm. should be the best the way best because thing. they also, those kind of things, um, your body's more designed to absorb it even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes they give you the um, powder form of collagen stuff. Yes, they can tell you how pure it is, but doesn't necessarily mean that your body will be able to intake it. it the same way. Yeah. They're not that bad. It's like a it after you try it for a few times or maybe finding the good combination, it's probably not it's, it's probably more acceptable than you imagine. Yeah, so we also have the food property. Um so every food uh, before they're cooked in a very special way to change their property they have their own property so it's about the balance knowing that um, let's say your body's right now maybe like for
for example, now it's summer the eve, right? So um, most of the time, if you are someone who's working outside and you're exposed to the summer heat, then you might want to consume more of, let's say, watermelon, zucchini, uh, wheat turnip is a really good one, uh, citrus mm -hmm. kind of thing to kind of cool down your body. Yes. There's all all kinds of weird stuff. So <laughs> I think it's it's also in the cultural too. I noticed that um, here a lot of my patient um, when they when I ask them what they eat, they oh, really frequently patient tell me they only eat chicken, like chicken, yeah. uh, occasionally turkey, but we're we're supposed to get a balance and mixtures of things from nature. And chicken is a very limited, biased, <laughs> yeah, very limited source, and you will be missing some of the nutrients, um, minerals, if you're only eating chicken. Mm -hmm. What about if you're not eating any um, meat yeah. at all? Vegan, like plant-based. Mm -hmm. Well, plant-based. There's still, you know, protein-based, um, protein, the things that you can get. Um, but of course, from our theory and point of view. <laughs> I think eating everything is the best, but I think in current modern diet, it's either someone who's eating really bad, meaning that they probably eat fast food and uh, steak or fried chicken every day, versus someone who's very, very cautious and um, eating very clean and not eating any meat at all. So again, from our theory, balance is the most important thing. We should have maybe like a 70% of our diet coming from the plant. But I think the 20, 30% of mm -hmm. some kind of animal product will still be helpful. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> or you can take supplements, but it's not the best. I, I was, uh, we, we still uh, prefer a patient to get their food and things or their health resources from the environment instead of, you know, just popping the pill. Because I think nowadays, um, a lot of problem coming from, instead of making a change in your lifestyle, say, you know, I'm going to be sleeping before 11 o'clock, I'm going to be exercising during the day, and doing proper lifestyle changes, people wanted to pop one pill and solve the problem and wishing that one pill will be magical and fix <laughs> everything. But sometimes that pill is just pretty much cutting off your alarm and just let you keep going and until the problem is even worse, then you upgrade to the next level of the drug. Yeah. So I believe even for our herbal medicine supplements or um, any kind of medication, I think the original intention should be we'll put a patient on this thing for three months, six months, one month, and then we stop. We should be stopping. It's not something I don't believe a uh, supplement or um, medication is food that you should be eating every day. So you should be taking the supplement as needed or taking the pill as needed. But once your body gets to a uh, better state, then we should be able to try to maintain it by ourselves instead of worrying about side effects and other things in the future. Hmm. I didn't know if I'm going over time. No, you're fine. You can talk for the whole rest of the day. <laughs> Anyone who can leave, you guys know you guys are welcome to leave whenever you're ready. And, so yeah, I know you're fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, our diagnosis approach Usually when patients come in, we check their tongue and pulse. And believe it or not, a lot of times, these um, ancient wisdom is actually pretty accurate. So uh, I, a lot of time I was able to, let's say, I remember there was a patient coming probably two years ago. Um, she's 80, 85 years old at the time. And I checked with, mm, okay, she's coming for knee pain. And I was checking the tongue and pulse and help her. Mm, how's your heart? How's your cardiovascular? Oh, my doctor say I'm perfect. I'm not on any kind of hypertension drug. I'm perfectly fine. 
I'm like, okay, y'all, um, they'll just, just watch y'all. But two years later, she coming back for actually sciatica, so something else. And then she told me that, oh, I just installed a pacemaker last year. Mm-hmm. So it's like, to her, it's like surprising. She's going from no symptom, no problem at all with the heart. The doctor told her that she's really healthy to a pacemaker. Yeah. So sometimes we're able to see things even before you officially diagnose because we can see a tendency. Like, okay, you might want to watch out in your lifestyle towards this direction. Um, let's say, for example, well, you can't really see. If your tongue, the tip of the tongue is really, really red, that usually tells us that um, you're not sleeping well at night. A lot of time, maybe patients say, oh, I can still, I can stay there for like a 10 hours. <laughs> yeah. But um, it could also mean that you're, even you're laying there for 10 hours without waking up in the middle, <laughs> but your mind was not rested. So when you wake up, you feel like you were, you live another life just, and you just wake up from the other job pretty much and you continue with your life. And then there's things that, you know, we'll say, okay, you need to do this, do that, maybe, um, let's say, even just soaking your feet before you go to bed, trying to warm up your feet, and that will help cool down your mind. Things like that will give patient tips um, to help them. So I think I really, find it really really amazing how people find out about these um, I'm the, and I'm still in the constant learning process but so far I feel like it's very it always um, yeah. surprised me sometimes <laughs> so when when we do acupuncture therapy we insert needles either let's say could be on the hand, could be on the knee, could be on the ear, could be on the body somewhere. But most of the time, we're not inserting the needle where you have problem. So for example, um, let's say you have lower back pain. I probably needle on the foot, on the hand, on the leg somewhere instead of on the lower back. Because according to that channel pathway, the channel goes this way and I can insert needles stimulating at the source instead of at the local area to help your brain reversing and resetting the signal. Mm. Um, and then also because sometimes, you know, get, um, a lot of patients, they, even if they say for lupus patient, they, you might have a combination of fibromyalgia, okay? So you might be sensitive to touch at the very area that you already have pain. So when we insert needle, that's a torture. <laughs> okay. So afterwards, you might feel like, oh my God, my lower back is still painful. But is that coming from the needle sensation? Or is it coming from you know, your lower back pain? Or are you getting better? But if we insert needle at other places, and afterwards, you can see if your uh, lower back pain is changed or not, if it makes difference. But of course, there's so many points to choose from, so everyone's different. We don't have that. And then we also use cupping therapy. Um, this is a new trend now because after the Michael Phelps getting the cupping marks at the Olympics, we got all a bunch of calls coming in and trying to ask, like, oh, can we do cupping for this and that and that, everything. Um, but cupping, it looks really ugly, but 99% of patients love it. The only 1% just because they have a wedding to go to next week, they don't want to <laughs> have this on their back. Yeah. Was that always Lisa? I it's had coughing and it didn't either except in one place, I think. Well, usually the place that actually turns black or purple is the area that you need it the most. Oh. Yeah, so if you're really healthy in the other area, when we do cupping, most likely you have pink for a little bit and then it probably disappear within an hour. Yeah, because just imagine, um, I'm sure when you take your blood, have your blood drawn, if you were not feeling well the past few days, like your 
your energy really low, or you're, or you're really having, you're really sick, the blood is more black, because it's lack of oxygen, lack of good nutrients. But when you're healthier, when you're like, okay, I've been working out the past two months, when you take the blood, it will be more red. Okay, so when the cupping mark is really black, that means that's the area. Yes, your heart is pumping your blood from, but maybe not enough to the area to take out the junk and replenish the body. Yeah, because I had it for a cleansing, um, but it actually helped the pain that I had in my back. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was surprised. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the reason why it helped, number one, the cupping we use, well, I, I use it, um, the traditional way, which is a fire cup. So we use fire to burn off the <laughs> oxygen and produce the suction. <laughs> what? It's actually very comfortable. It is. Yeah. Really? It is. It really is. The fire. <laughs> uh -huh. You're not going to get burned. You have to be like really quick and mm -hmm. yeah, th yeah. There's no really fire helpful. on your body. <laughs> yeah. But um, so we produce the suction and put the cup on top of the uh, the concern area or uh, pressure point area. That's the first picture, right? Yes. Yes. And then, um, so if the air that's because of the vacuuming, it's almost like you're changing the dynamic of your muscle tension, and also there's fascia there on the bottom. Everything's kind of connected with the connective tissue, so that changed the tightness. So sometimes, yeah, it's very very effective in the pain management, and sometimes I don't have to put it on the area that you actually have pain. It could be. If by palpation or examination, I feel like maybe your shoulder is too tight, the right shoulder is off balance, that's why you're having lower back pain on the left side. Mm -hmm. we, if we put the cupping on the right shoulder, it actually changed the dynamic and then remove the tension from your left lower back. That's how it can change your lower back pain too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the number one reason people come to see acupuncture or Oriental medicine, Chinese medicine, a practitioner in America is pain management. Yeah. So cupping is something that's very, very effective. It forcefully bring the lymph and blood circulation to the palm area to kind of like, hey, this area needs extra attention and we need to heal this space properly. Are people feeling relief immediately or is this something that? Immediately? Yes, most of the time. But I of guess. course, not. Oh, I cannot say like all oh, everyone I guarantee right. but I will say especially the patient who see the part copy mark the darker it is the more they will feel a difference mm -hmm. afterwards did you bring me a card today no no <laughs> I did I looked at the and I didn't put it together that it was so bad oh. until after because you know you left you leave whatever I went for cleaning and then later I'm going yeah. I have a question. Like, I've heard like, um, it, like because you're drawing up the blood and mm -hmm. stuff, that it is that something like like you know when someone gets a hickey, mm -hmm. um, kind of like where you're drawing it up. And I've heard no, like, uh, a kid. It was like on Facebook or something, and it said they got a hickey and then they died after that because it caused a aneurysm. Or something like that. Oh that's that's a really because they, face. Yeah, I know, <laughs> isn't that weird? But I thought, okay, well, is that like the same thing as well? No, because you're trying the blood. That's up? why I mean, for <laughs> us, doctor. we still consider this as a <laughs> medical procedure instead of like, hey, do it at home kind of thing. Although there, I know there's people selling the kits online. You know, you can. It, it's it's not that hard to find, but yeah. there's always a risk with any kind of procedure. That's why. You, uh, it should be performed by a professional yeah, yeah. who's going to review and see maybe the, the <laughs> kind of medication um, you're taking. Are you a good candidate for it? There's things that we need to watch out for. Um, let's say maybe for diabetes patient, we'll do it more lightly instead of the full shipping. You know, cause like someone that's on blood thinners or yes. aspirin therapy, mm -hmm. would this not be recommended? It will. Well, it will definitely need to be monitored much more closely okay. than like, okay, here's the cup, I walk away for 10 minutes. Because okay. <laughs> the, the patient who's on those medications is going to be much more severe than 
yeah. how the person would die. Yeah. If, so the pressure could also be adjusted. Yes. Is there an age minimum or? Um, mm. I mean, honestly, it's in some part of the like a rural, um, you know, more suburban area. Sometimes people do it at home in Asia. So I will say when they're too young, let's say younger than 10 years old, maybe not the best, but there's also similar procedure that they can we can do. Um, like for example, cupping also is very uh, common practice when people are catching a cold in Asia. It's almost like, because there's an uh, area, we believe that when you're, when you're catching a cold, the pathogen, or wind pathogen coming from this area. So we'll do some cupping or uh, there's a, also a scraping technique called Gua Sha, and that will help releasing and help the uh, patient recover much faster. So even when they're younger, we still can do that, but it just have to be, well, number one is the person who's healthy, um, if they're taking any medication, and once they're, are, are they developed fully and like with their muscle and skeletal? Yeah. If they're too young, I what would suggest definitely don't put it on like bony area. If it's only on the muscle, most likely it should be okay. Yeah. Okay. And then of course there's herbs. Um, there's I'll say a good couple hundred of different formulas, um, which there's tons, thousands, tens of thousands of herbs, combination of different things mixing together. And um, in this medicine, there we have a lot of classic books that guess um, they already created a formula. So most of the time, when you go to acupuncturist or herbalist, they will either just prescribe you or something that's already made, that's following the classic formula, or uh, someone who probably can customize a formula for you. Yeah, everyone have their different approach. Yeah, so um, we believe that um, this is a lot of time when prescribed correctly, it's it's much better um, than a very highly concentrated pharmaceutical drug sometimes mm -hmm. because it's more customizable and then also um, it's more natural. It's, but of course, there's sometimes people will say, oh, when I take the pill, I feel the difference right away. But when I take herbs or supplements, it takes a little bit longer. Because we're, co we're going from the approach of trying to fix things more naturally from the root, instead of like, okay, I'm just going to cut, cut off the symptom and you don't have it anymore. So there's always good and bad. I think I will say when when you have a problem that's more urgent, it's life-threatening, it's very unbearable, it's very severe, definitely talk to your doctor and take the medication because there's no point of suffering, right? But if there's things, when, when things calm down, you should also talk to your doctor and see if there's option of, like, can I ease off on this medication? Is there any lower dosage I can talk to, I can, ta I can take? or if anything else I can switch to. Because I think it's, again, going back to the balance. Anything, even though it's very good for you, when you eat too much of it, it's still going to be bad for you. Yeah, that will be our, my thoughts. Okay, so yeah, and also because people come in for pain management, other than the acupuncture, the needling, um, the cupping, the herbs, we also do some soft tissue, and it's almost like a, <laughs> not sure if you have Thai massage before, it's a combination of stretching and then a deeper tissue massage. It's not um, like on the surface, yeah. so in the process, sometimes it will be more painful, and that's kind of normal, mm -hmm. but most people will, should get the relief because it changes the dynamic of the muscle tension. Yeah. Um, but of course, if you're already very sensitive to touch, let's say a fibromyalgia patient, mm -hmm. we definitely have to find an alternative approach or taking it lightly. Uh, well, just a list 
of what the current World Health Organization approved research lists that what acupuncture can do. As you can see, most of them are pain related. Mm -hmm. So that's why most people come in for pain management. Um, but we are also very, very effective in um, like emotion kind of thing. So anxiety, depression, um, the, the digestion kind of problem, a lot of people are coming for that. Um, yeah, but of course what we can do is not limited to only this list, but this is what the research showed and proven. And then thank you for your time. Any questions?